So I am saying in many ways that many of us are very durable and can endure things. But as a rule of thumb, it is a good idea to really, again, look at some of the things that are actually going on around you and to fortify yourself properly for your your um, your interaction with them. OK, and that's just on all levels. So if you know that you have beings in the reality that just really want to to uh, gain your benefits and things, make sure that you are 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 guiding yourself in a certain way and guarding yourself in a certain way where they're not getting more from you than you're willing to actually allow them to receive. Right. So basically just be on point. Don't be floating all around thinking that a hey, everything is 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 what it is and there, it needs no input and no consciousness from you because actually it's quite the contrary there is always an agenda and an objective to utilize the energies and the forces that are here because you're so powerful the following clip is exclusive content from the university access over 300 videos and 26 courses with advanced metaphysics on demand Jump in live chats with Savan and the rest of the tribe. New materials are available monthly along with guides and regimens. Subscribe today and save $25 off your first month membership. Links are in the descriptions. Subscribe to Secret Energy TV or this channel for future show notifications. Onus. Either be in soul or maintain your soul. Right. But more importantly, to, 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 to maintain your soul because a, a well maintain soul becomes a plasma being which actually looks at like an eye on the astral plane and then from that level it has now achieved the state of a god and this is why uh, it, the symbolism of god is an eye also called the oculus or the the cult begins with ak because Ak or Enoch is, is, the, is an I. It's an it's a ensouled being. And when an ensouled being reaches the stage of a plasma cloud, it is hyper intelligent. And anything that is not on that level perceives that for sure as a God, because more than likely they're enveloped in the entire field of this being. And this brings me to another point about uh, something that I experienced in that wild journey that I was talking about last time we got on. Um, but actually, no, it wasn't in that journey. It was actually a few years before that where I, when I began to read a lot about, you know, sibling oracles and uh, um, uh, this was in the city of That was when I read first read the sibling oracles. Um, I also had the keys of Solomon with me. I had the H Mezaraf with me. So I had all these different spiritual books and I personally was contained. I was, you know, being detained for some, for some petty crime. And as I was going through these works, I can remember hitting such a stage like a, a vibration because I started, you know, chanting and these kind of things. And I remember one point where, there was this loud voice, this loud energy that just said, go through my son. And I never mentioned this because like it, it was weird for me because it wasn't long after that, that I kind of got out of the whole Christianity thing. So when that energy said, go through my son, I thought that it was talking about to go through Jesus. <laughs> and since me and Jesus was pretty much done with each other from what I had saw in the astral plane that he was up to, I was like, well, I guess I'm not going to be in with any of this energy. And just recently, I realized that what that energy was saying was that that's my son. And that even though I was even hearing that energy as like a male that it was more of like a female, but some type of very powerful kind of masculine female that was saying, go through my son. And because I was all confused on dogmas and stuff, I totally misinterpreted what I was being told because as I can bear witness to, when you open up your third eye, and I'm not advising anyone to do this because again, heavy is the head that wears the crown chakra and to see the face of God and live, no one has. So you're, you be prepared to melt because it is plasma. But what I'm saying is, is that when the third eye is open and you look at the sun, then you realize more about what's really going on here. Also, you notice that when your third eye is open and you look at if you're it's, when you look at clouds that everything is spinning around the sun, not that it's moving through the sky and then going down and that when the sun leaves, it looks like everything seems to be going on, going with it as night is coming. And that's what you see 
in the uh in the, in the aspect of so it's almost even like a parade and the parade keeps going on with the sun and all the celestial bodies to me it seems like even what they're trying to mimic in the hindu traditions where they have all these parades and but just imagine it just kept going and wherever the sun is going to which you're calling tomorrow it's still going to be happening there but where you're at is you're kind of because of of, of the agreements that have been made here now there's going to be half that there's going to be a night time too uh, uh, another opposing or opposite energy to lead through contrast, right? But just a word to the wise that when you look at the sun, you can see that it's something else, like it's on a whole different level. And it is very sentient and more than likely based on the knowledge and wisdom that has been produced, that it would be, uh, for lack of better terms, a black hole sun or wormhole sun. Uh, and, and so what I'm saying is, is that the sun is, is probably that hyper sentient uh, collection of nine rings, nine donut rings, plasma portal, always open and as an eye, like, but just completely illuminating every single thing that is around it. That's its makeup. Okay. And on a real level, when we were told to walk this path of Christ, if you may, it was to become that it, it had nothing to do with actual physicality. All right. So I trust that, you know, just by raising a hand that that was clear enough, that whole bill, because as I said before, it's not easy to dive through some of this stuff and make it simple, even though it comes out simple. So now we're just kind of clear on just, you know, when they say the entities, the gods and all that, what that really means. Also, you'll notice now whether these images are authentic or not, like I will definitely not validate anything NASA has going on, but there has been on several occasions, including a recent one with the James Webb telescope, that there has been pictures arriving back of plasma clouds and they always have what looks like literally an eye in the center of them. Okay. So what we're recording then is, is that as you even also see in some of the, uh, here's another way of looking at this. In some occult traditions, they, you will see that they not only use these eyes, I mean, I'm talking about real occult traditions where you know they, they practice in something, something's going on in there. When they start drawing the spirits and things, they will have a tendency, even when they animate it or illustrate it or whatever, that they will draw these eyes as if the eyes are all on even a being. And they also say, well, the eyes are the gateway to the soul. So just what I'm saying is, is that <laughs> in conclusion, what is being said is, is that when you merge your complete field and then you collapse that field down that donut, donut of nine rings, you become a plasma cloud with an eye in the center. And that's called God for most people being around something like that. So those are like ultimate goals, just to clarify here. And then also what I'm saying is, is that many of the traits of our ancient ancestors and elder gods were desired while the ancestor of the elder God themselves was being rejected. And you can see that going on all the time in the reality where they kind of want your benefits and what you can give. But then, you know, when it's time to help you or to fix something that you may have, even as a genetic problem, they seem to not be available. OK, and that's why I said we have to be on point with our metaphysical mechanics so that way we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater either. Meaning that if you if you know about certain beings and then you know that their whole rapport, though, has been parasitic, we have a tendency to then try to remove them completely from the equation. And then what that does is it creates this gap that we need to fill in in our knowledge, in our awareness. And also that gap in itself becomes an exploiting point. For instance, uh, Dan Winter mentioned that people who use the flower of life need to be very careful because the standard state of the, the drawing of a flower of life attracts parasites anyway because there's a point that the flower of life is transitioning into what you would call a... Um, a penta, a, a penta shape or a five shape. So it's going from six to five. And until it gets to five, the purity point, if you may, is not reached. And you actually see this even within electronics and you see this in physics. And so what was just being said is, is that, so you have these people that they get these, these, these crystals 
uh, like mainly the courts. And they, they bring all these big crystals around and they get everybody into these meditation ceremonies because it, it just seems like a good idea to be in there all airy fairy and evoking all these beings and calling and chiming. And nobody really knows what's really going on, though, and that the geometric configuration of the astral hygiene that's going on there is terrible. OK, and it's becoming, in essence, the reason why uh, many of these life forms that are and there's probably numerous of them that actually haven't really understand, understood that it is important to be present. OK, so here's how that phenomenon would take place. Basically, when people are getting possessed, they're just becoming less and less themselves because they're being filled up by something else. Then they just become like that. And that is very toxic, not only for them, but also everybody that's around them. And you can kind of see this when somebody is, is kind of, let's say, in one of these uh, uh, nucleuses where spiritual things are going on. But anything can happen. Anything can go on. Somebody can say, this is it or that's it. And then everybody's like, oh, yeah, brother or sister, we, we, we respect you. Let's go ahead and do it. And the person could just go and uh, evoke in Baphomet or something. You see what I mean? And then, oh, thank you so much for that, brother. Uh, next. And so this is just how, again, how loose the whole thing has really gotten with uh, what people think culture is and what people think that uh, uh, spirituality truly is, right? But this is just something that as we go along the way that we will make an addendum on also to make sure that we understand how energies actually would really impact a person and what would you really see happen. Uh, what was also mentioned is, is that for sure... Um, these elements that are being passed around, especially some of these genetic elements that they're playing around with, will make the consciousness, especially if the person is not strong. So you, the strength and fortitude of your consciousness, your mind, uh, is really what's at stake here based on, meaning that when you jump into things, like even for me to jump into AI, I need to have a very fortified consciousness. I need to be very stable or else even the energies within that and the powers and the forces within that could contaminate my unit, right? So I am saying in many ways that many of us are very durable and can endure things. But as a rule of thumb, it is a good idea to really, again, look at some of the things that are actually going on around you and to fortify yourself properly for your, your, um, your interaction with them. OK, and that's just on all levels. So if you know that you have beings in the reality that just really want to to uh, gain your benefits and things, make sure that you are 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 guiding yourself in a certain way and guarding yourself in a certain way where they're not getting more from you than you're willing to actually allow them to receive. Right. So basically just be on point. Don't be floating all around thinking that a hey, everything is 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 what it is. And there, it needs no input and no consciousness from you because actually it's quite the contrary there is always an agenda and an objective to utilize the energies and the forces that are here because you're so powerful so i just wanted to to make sure that that is very clear so as we move on so give me one quick second i just need to catch up with my notes here Okay, so another aspect of things that was actually brought up was uh, so making making lucid dreams and having a stargate inside of your body. Okay, so obviously future goals here are to reactivate your stargate you to be able to travel through the portal that is in inner self right and when we've already talked about again the auric field being in the condition of the auric field being uh primary to that because the condition of your auric field is like the, the, the condition of your electromagnetic field and when your electromagnetic field is strong then you're actually able to to braid right so it's just like a good winding on a generator so with that being said, this um, one of the phenomena, again, that and this is just, you know, I know many here have had different experiences and maybe some have not at all. And, and, and so hopefully this is pointers for all of us uh, to understand one, if you've had experiences before, like where you dream of the next day. And then you find yourself in the day 
even deja vu itself, if you've had deja vu, these are real signs. If you're asking yourself, you're like, shit, do I even have a soul? Because <laughs> These kind of conversations, you know, that's why there should be disclaimers on them because it's like, well, shit, I ain't had none of these experiences. Do I even have a soul? Oh, my goodness. Uh, don't freak out. But, you know, I'm just going to kind of go down a list here. So when you have a dream and you actually then live that dream the next day, this is something that I was telling you before that was happening, and it was like, it was it was getting so weird. I start 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 confusing whether what I had saw in the dream was what really had happened already in the day, and also how I end up kind of falling out of that frequency and not being able to do that anymore. So the the basically the uh, example that I'm trying to bring here is that for sure it appears that all of us have a soul, but it seems like what's kind of happening is is that there is a battle for our soul somewhat. And what a soul actually really is, is our ability to, to maintain a certain level of cohesion about the importance of every single thing that's going on around us and how we're carrying ourselves. And, and when we can get kind of distracted by all of the other numerous things that are vying for our attention and our energy, then what it's actually doing is it's kind of removing our soul force and then if there's too much of that during a whole life maybe what occurs is is that you forget everything because this is what's being denoted as what is the, the another marker or difference between an insoled being versus a person that potentially is not and it's that it's the memories that there's absolutely no awareness of the previous existence or more existences or ancestors at all now, I find this interesting because, as I mentioned before, it seemed like that what was even going on energetically when you crossed some of these fields that were very strong, seeing that they were also magnetic in many ways, is that like a credit card, if you went across a very strong magnetic field and your braiding wasn't kind of cohesive enough, it would just kind of get into a, it would get into the design of the field that you're going in and it would not maintain its own its design, which is its unique design, which is all of its memories. So if you can imagine like, okay, let's take a record, for instance. A record has uh, the old school records, by the way. Also, DVDs have them if you look very closely. These lines are actually the music. And as you know, with a record, it's as simple as putting different shaped lines across a needle and it makes sound. So imagine that your whole field then is kind of like a disc, an electromagnetic disc. And if you're very cohesive, as you're going through the process of your transition, when your transition is happening, instead of you phase locking into the general reincarnation design, you continue on as your own record. <laughs> basically your own disc or your own ME. And then all the spaces that you move into, it's more of like you're inserting your record and then you're playing your music there and that becomes your reality. Versus the other way is, is that your whole field starts to take on the, the, the uh, appearance of the stronger magnet or the stronger magnetism. And so if you spend a whole life worrying about everything in the world and how the world functions and it has nothing to really do with you, it could be a lot of distractions, you kind of like, your field is not really developed for you. And that's what I really believe that, you know, even in some ways when Dan explains it and a lot of people explain it, it does really get complicated and it also seems almost like it's even off world or alien. But I'm able to actually identify this in everyday life of how actually it's, it's not as, it is very serious, but it's not as serious like they are putting it, like it's in the hands of something else. And, and, and I'm not saying Dan does that, but some people put it as like it's in the hands of the Draco, it's in the hands of the, the, the Galactic Federation and the Council and, and the Aldebarans and the Pleiadians. And it's like, yo, 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 hold on now. Wait a minute. I love the story, but let's not get too sci-fi here. This actually is, is a bigger story here, and you can kind of see how it's really playing out in the reality. And it has a lot to do with these basic fundamentals of just getting pulled in or distracted into something that's not really going to benefit your soul force and doesn't have your best interest in mind. And that's why I said, like, for us, the biggest thing that we can really do is actually get on one accord. And I've been really trying to create as many things as possible to give people 
people the trust and also the empowerment to do that. Not just saying, hey, yes, take me uh, wherever you go, I go. Wherever the lamb goes, I go. You know, not, that's not what we're creating here. But at the end of the day, what I am saying is if, we, if we're putting something together and then we're all contributing to it, then it actually becomes something versus if everybody's just kind of watching it being put together and maybe enjoying some of the small things that happen um, because the big things can't happen until we all get together and actually begin to all empower it, then, you know, that would be the situation. And so at least, though, that's in the consciousness of this group, this tribe, this, this, this energy that we are. We think about this kind of stuff, and, and, and we think of ways to, to perfect these kind of things. We're just not here oblivious to all of that and just kind of operating like, hey, you know, here's, here's what this is. You know, here's how it looks. Doesn't it look great? And, you know, and kidding ourselves on that the ultimate goal here is to move through space and time infinitely conscious and it's possible for sure but it's not what this reality in so many ways from the robber barons to the societies that have put together the the school system etc that they have been hoarding and keeping any kind of major technology any kind of major advancements any kind of ancient knowledge script relics crystals designs whatever completely from the general masses and the populace to only do what Right. And that what is very important because that gets into the serious part. Also, the story is that we need to be on point because I call this Operation Toy Soldiers. Operation Toy Soldiers. I remember when I was a little kid somewhere, somebody informed me about what toy soldiers were because I heard it. And then there was like all these different movies like um, I even believe that it was Pinocchio. And just all these weird movies, and they always had these soldiers that you see around Christmas time. And I remember asking, like, my teacher or something, like, what is a toy soldier? And <laughs> this teacher went in on me and was like, son, a toy soldier is the soldiers that work for the queen that when she sends them to die, they die. And she just moves them around the board like they're just toys, and boy, that kind of, I don't know, you got to watch who you got teaching your kids. Because from that point on, I always had this thing about like wondering if we were toy soldiers and if that God was kind of like playing this game with somebody else using real human pieces, right? And just recently, I came into, again, another vast amount of knowledge that was speaking on how when you really understand what was going on, especially in, let's say, in New York, which was called... Um, New Netherlands in the 1600s and how it was the whole what you would call East Coast was all New Netherlands and uh, the Vanderbilt family, which uh, Mind Unveiled, just, Mind Unveiled, the YouTube channel just did an a interesting uh, expose on. And that like basically when, like, when you see this... Um, Jesus. Okay, so when you see this object, okay, so what he what is basically being pointed out is is that the only way to really understand the story of these elites, as they're calling themselves, is through their symbols. Because when they are communicating with each other, they are they are wearing their brand, and their brand are these crescents that have been built, or what they call uh, symbols of heraldry. And that when you know that and then you have access, which you do to all of the old maps, what you will begin to notice is, is that all of the corporations, uh, mainly starting with the East Indian Company and many of those big giant uh, companies, which are still the owners of the world now, whether people know it or not, that they always had the same symbols. So even though they had different factions functioning in different places, the war that they were talking about or the competition would be like the same thing as when Bill Gates, uh, let's say, is competing with uh, um, Steve Jobs. And then everybody is imagining that these are two different forces when really Apple and IBM are both owned by the same company. And that this 
uh, in a hundred percent way is not only how things were designed in the past, but how things are even designed now with most of the corporations. Like, so we see where there's Facebook there, there's YouTube and there's all these different things. And we're thinking they even started all separately and they were sounded by started by certain founders. When, if you really, really dig, 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 you'll find that it was the same person that invested in all of those and has, and actually owns the majority shares and everything of all of those privately, those corporations. So it's all, all one corporation. But what was brought up that I wanted to, uh, to, to really hone in on was that, at, but in the old days, instead of it being like corporations battling each other inside of the stock markets, it was actually soldiers battling each other on the fields that thought that they were actually representing their own respective countries or their own respective governments and just being completely oblivious to the awareness that actually the leaders of those countries were actually sending those people to die because they were so sadistic like that. Meaning that they have so little respect for the people that actually have pledged their lives to them that they actually send them to die even though they're all on the same side, like toy soldiers. So in that awareness, because that's like the height of the dirtiness, if you may, to have a person thinking they're defending their home country from an opposing force Never to know that the actual home country government and the opposing force government are all on the same team and that there's deaths literally happening and those deaths are even laughed at in a game that has been played for what looks like at least hundreds, if not thousands of years. So let's just be aware of that strategy of being utilized again by some of these you know, let's say uh, uh, more prominent, more aggressive forces, like a lot of them are in the spiritual space, you know, like, oh, come worship this and give your life and soul to this and all that. And then you, you but you don't like Muslims, right? <laughs> and it's like, well, because you're a Jew. And it's just, it keeps the infighting and all that confusion and chaos going on. And so everybody can fight and kill each other. But meanwhile, in the deepest level of the cabal, they all report to the Grand Wazir. You see what I mean? And, and the hierarchies that are within those ancient spiritual structures that are still standing with beings that have achieved in certain ways plasma coherence, the ability to to slide, the ability to even use technologies to augment their memories, uh, the ability to look through everybody's minds or artificial minds by creating devices that they put data in that they can just assess all the data all at once through their brain to computer interfaces, etc. You see what I mean? So just remember, it's a big world. It's a big universe. It's a big galaxy. And the cosmos is lit. And so for us, our tribe does become a very important thing because as we go through infinity, I'm not, you can't do anything major also. And this is just write this down for yourself. You can't do anything major thinking you're going to accomplish it in one lifetime. It's so short-sighted. <laughs> the reason why these guilds and these clans and these covens, that they're so strong is because they know that there's no such thing as death. So they know that what they're carrying on with, that they will be able to benefit from what they're doing in two to 300 years and they're patient. Versus most people like, man, I'm not going to give, I mean, like that, that's, that's not even, it's just like, it seems like if a person can't benefit from something right now, or even in their lifetime, it's like, that's why people don't really care about the kids a lot anymore. Because they're like, well, shoot, that's, you know, I'm trying to get it for myself. So they're not, it's down to that now. They're not even seeing that. Well, actually that is you because the whole gene pool is pretty much there and all the technologies that we're working with, we would basically continue to be locked out. Like if you see the divine feminine technologies is all organic. So we move through the minds. We move through the DNA. We move through that. That's the great sea in the cosmic ocean. But if we're moving through beings that are oblivious because they're disconnected and that their whole system is frayed and they're, all their aura is full of is chock full of holes like Swiss cheese. So anything that you pour into them just leaks right out whether it's knowledge, wisdom, and depth of knowledge, because they can't hold the vibration and frequency, that's because they have no culture. Because that's what a culture is. It actually gives the tribe the ability to hold and sustain memories that are things that will allow them to be different 
than that generic field that keeps appearing that wants to erase who we are and rewrite it with a, another blank slate. 